Akiro was a Japanese boy who drew cats. Now, there's nothing wrong with drawing cats. Lots of people draw cats. But Akiro was different. He drew only cats. Nothing but cats. No dogs, no horses, no houses, mountains, flowers or people. Only cats. And he drew them all the time. His brothers and sisters helped their parents in the fields but Akiro sat at the edge of the field, drawing cats in the wet mud. After a day's work, everyone ate rice and fish hungrily. But Akiro drew cats with the rice and tried to coax his rice cats to eat the fish. And when the cats did not eat the fish, he wept and refused to have his supper. His mother was fed up. His father was in despair. What do we do with the boy? They asked each other. They could not understand this quiet son of theirs who had started drawing cats as soon as he was old enough to draw. Why do you draw cats all the time? His mother asked him one day. You see, mother, Akiro told her solemnly, I have to keep practicing until I draw the perfect cat. And what is the perfect cat? Hmm? I don't know, Akiro replied, frowning with thought. But it's not this and he wiped out the cat he had drawn in the mud. Uh, looks like a perfectly good cat to me. His mother sighed, shaking her head and wondering what would become of her odd little boy. Finally, Akiro's parents decided to send him to a nearby temple to study under the priest there. He's not made for the fields and farming, said his father. Maybe he'll become a learned priest, said his mother. At the temple, the students learned to make ink, dip the brush in the ink and write with the brush. But Akiro dipped his brush in the ink and drew cats. When he was asked to write a word, he drew a cat. When he was asked to add two and two, he drew a cat. Then one day, when everyone was taking an afternoon nap, he drew cats on all the rice paper screens in the temple. Right numbers and verses and that 
they draw more than the truck, but the hero draws the cat. He sees cats all the time, number and the god, in frozen and the nine, cats, 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 cats all the time. The old priest looked at his beautiful screens, now covered with cats, called Akiro to him, and sighed. Akiro, Akiro, you cannot become a priest, he said. You do not have the temperament. Akiro did not know what a temperament was. But he realized that he was being told to leave. The old priest looked at the solemn little boy and he was filled with sadness. He wished he did not have to send him away, but he knew he was doing the right thing. Akiro was not meant to be a priest. He was quite sure of that. Any advice for me before I leave? Akiro asked him. The priest did not know what to say. Suddenly, the words came out of his mouth, straight from his heart, without passing through his mind. Stay away from large places. Sleep only in small spaces. Akiro was puzzled. It was a strange sort of advice for a priest to give a student when he was sending him away into the world. The old priest was equally puzzled. Now why did I say that? He wondered. And yet he felt that it was important. Remember, he said again, stay away from large places sleep only in small spaces. Akiro did not understand it at all, but a teacher's advice has to be taken with gratitude, even when it sounds odd and meaningless. So Akiro bowed low and said, Domo, which means thank you in Japanese, and left. He wandered around for half a day, not knowing where to go. He could not go home because he knew his parents would be disappointed and unhappy. Then he remembered that there was a large temple in the neighboring village. They might need a student there to help them keep the temple clean, he thought and walked quickly towards the village because the sun was beginning to make its way down the sky. By the time he reached the village, it was almost night time. Akiro went to the temple. It was open, but it was dark and silent inside. Anybody there? called Akiro. There was no answer. He stepped into the temple and stood there while his eyes got used to the darkness. A single lamp was burning in the temple and it threw a ghostly light on the white rice paper screens that stood on all four sides of the room. In a corner was a brush, an ink stick, and a hollow stone with a bit of water in it. A very strange feeling came over Akiro. As if in a dream, he went over to the corner, dipped the ink stick in the water, and rubbed it on the stone to make ink. He dipped the brush into the ink, and then he began to draw cats. 
Akiro had drawn cats for years. He could draw cats with his eyes shut. In the gloom of the temple, he could barely see what he was doing and yet, somehow, Akio knew that the cats he drew on those rice paper screens were perfect. He could almost hear them purr. By the time he had filled all the screens with cats, Akiro was so tired he was tottering on his feet. He was about to drop down onto the floor to sleep when suddenly he heard the old priest's voice in his head. Stay away from large places. Sleep only in small spaces. The temple was definitely a large place. He could not go out now. It was dark and cold and he knew no one in the village. But in one corner of the large room he saw a little cupboard. It was dusty and musty, but it was small. He got in and shut the door tight behind him. It was certainly small. Akiro was so tired that he fell asleep at once. But suddenly, in the middle of the night, he woke up with a start. Someone or something was screeching loudly. He wondered if he should get out and look when he heard a sound that made his blood run cold. It was the mewing of many cats. Then there were sounds of the kind that Akiro hoped he would never hear again. Screeching, scratching, blood-curdling sounds. Akiro closed his eyes pushed his fingers in his ears and rolled up into a tight little ball in the cupboard. After a while, there was silence. But Akiro dared not come out. He fell asleep again. And when he awoke, sunlight was streaming cheerfully in through the slats in the cupboard door. What a terrible dream that was, he mumbled to himself, rubbing his eyes sleepily as he tumbled out of the cupboard. The sight he saw made him gasp. In the middle of the room, lying on the floor, was a gigantic goblin rat. It was dead. Akiro stood frozen for a few moments, and then he remembered the noises of the night. Slowly, his eyes moved upwards towards the rice paper screens. One by one, he looked at the cats, the perfect cats that he had drawn the previous night. Every one of the cats had blood on its face. He had barely understood what had happened when a huge crowd of people came into the temple led by the priests of the temple. There he is, they called out. The boy who killed the goblin. Before Hakiro knew it, he had been taken to the priest's home and given so much to eat and drink that he could barely walk. You are our savior, said the priest of the big temple to Akiro. Long ago, in a dream, I was told that the temple could only be saved by a boy who drew cats. I thought it was the usual silliness of dreams. But still, 
I left the lamp and the brush and ink in the temple every night. And now, here you are. You have killed the goblin rat which has haunted the temple for years. If you will stay and be my student, I will make you the head priest of the temple when you grow up. But Akiro shook his head and smiled. I do not have the temperament, he said. So the people of the village gave him money and gifts and escorted him home to his parents, who were very, very happy to see him. Over the years, Akiro roamed across Japan, drawing cats wherever he went. When he grew up, he became a very famous artist. And though he grew quite old, he was always known as the boy who drew cats. Hope you had fun listening. Your next Audible experience is just one click away.